Okay, guys, we're here today with J.P. Sears. You know, he's obviously a you know very famous comedian, entrepreneur, you know, ultra spiritual guy in the internet. I mean, you have probably seen uh, a lot of his videos. Um, I mean, I know I have shared a lot of his videos in in, in some of my Facebook groups. I mean, I'm I'm a huge fan of of J.P. And I wanted to have him, you know, on on this course because well, well, one, he has managed to build a huge audience, and second. He has found ways to monetize from it, you know, in a way that it, it, it looks organic. It, it, it feels right to buy his product, to, to feel connected with, you know, with the message he is giving. And uh, I would like JP to introduce himself to you in a better fashion than I actually did. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, thank you, Fernando, for having me on. And I'm happy to talk with all of you lovely people. So how I would introduce myself it's, it's very important that i share with everybody that i have a beautiful majestic blue dolphin like eyes and uh i i do youtube videos and you know i guess not just on youtube but online videos and i've spent the past 15 years doing emotional healing work with people and the videos are recent in the past two and a half years. And uh, I also have the opportunity to do a lot of speaking and performing. And as uh, Fernando, you mentioned, I've got a, a book that came out a little while ago and a t-shirt line and then some other fun and exciting things in the, down the pipeline. So yeah, that, that's a little bit that like, that's not who I am. That's more what I do, but that tends to be how we introduce ourselves in the, the world we live in. So I actually have to people that sometimes we have our, in, our internet persona, we have our real life persona, right? Uh, yeah. Who is, who is JP Sears in real life then? Yeah, I'm still trying to figure that out. I, I definitely don't know. I have my opinions in, and, and, uh, some of my opinions of who I am in real life, I'm, I'm someone who cares. I, uh, I care to help people, and I, I definitely care to help myself. Being a curious student of life is important to me where I want to learn about myself, more you know, less about who I think I am and learn more about who I really am. I want to connect with myself more in my heart. Uh, I'm always doing healing and growing work, and, and it inspires me seeing other people doing that kind of thing as well. And, and I like to think that what people see of me online, it's, it's not at all the whole me, but it's a part of me. I, I've got the comedic side of me that's it's been there you know, always, at least since I was a young child. So when people see my comedy videos, you know, that's very much a part of me. It's like I, I bring out the the inner comedian and let him dominate my personality for a video. So that's a part of me. And then I've got a, a very sincere side as well that, uh, it, you know, it's probably not nearly as prevalent online. But on my YouTube channel, I've got older videos, like I think 150 older videos that are just sincere life advice videos, me speaking from my heart. So... I think between the the comedy and the sincerity, those are two important parts that help make the whole of who J.P. Sears is in real life, whatever real life is. <laughs> uh, sometimes I don't know myself. I, I, I have found myself that I actually more connected with people online than people actually know in real life. Uh, I, I find better connections because they are a lot more aligned with my, with my views um, than when I meet people, you know, on the street and we just have relations because you know we want to go out in a way <laughs> yeah, yeah absolutely you know uh yeah, because, uh, how, how do you decided to you know to to build an audience to you know to um to start his career i mean i mean right now you have what millions of followers you know in in, in different uh, social media channels uh but what 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 triggered it I mean, obviously you're a funny guy. I mean, and you're very smart. I mean, it, you know, your the combination of your your messages is a very well thought process about what you want to convey in a message, but also you combine it with comedy, and mm -hmm. it's only what it's has created. You know, all this following. I mean, uh, I, I talk to very smart people and I talk to regular people, and they're like, "Yeah, we like we like what he says. It's it's funny, but it's to the point, right?" Mm -hmm. How do you decide to get into that? Yeah, well, I think. Uh 
Let's see. I would say the a, a big part of what's helped me build my audience is by being authentic. And I know authentic's kind of a, a buzzword, yet it's I think a very appropriate one. So I, I do believe, at least based on my experience with me, being uh, more authentic is a huge catalyst that helped me build my audience. And a little backstory on that. When I started really building my audience two and a half years ago, I wasn't trying to build my audience. I, I was just coming from a more authentic place where I, I started making comedy videos. And for 13 years before that, I had told myself it would be bad for business for me to let my sense of humor come out on on camera or in any way in the public setting that would discredit me as an emotional healing coach, which is how I had been exclusively earning my living. You know, emotional healing coaches aren't, they're not supposed to be funny. They're so not discredit me. So, but in other words, I wasn't allowing myself to be authentic. I was thinking I need to be just serious and sincere all the time and then also funny. But authentic JP is sincere, but also funny. So I got tired of betraying myself. And then like I was having these creative urges, like, oh, I'd like to share this perspective through the language of comedy, but I, oh, I can't. So finally I just, I got tired of betraying myself. I'm like, okay, I'm going to make a comedy video. <laughs> and then, so the first comedy video I made was called How to Be Ultra Spiritual. But that was really you boil it down, that was me allowing myself to be more me, period. And, and I think there, there's so many dimensions to building an audience, but I think the dimension that I value the most would be authenticity. And I think what happens when we allow ourselves to be ourselves online and share some of that with the world, granted, we can't share 100% of all of us, but when we share some of our real self with the world, not who we think we should be, not who we think we need to be in order to have like a thriving business. But when we share some of like who we really are, we expose the surface area of our self to other people so that the ones who are great matches for us, who want to pay attention to us, they can. Because we, we give them surface area of us to connect to. But when I was just thinking I need to only be serious JP all the time, I wasn't giving surface area of myself for the the audience to connect to, the, the audience who would actually vibe with me. So when I, in, in looking at the numbers, when I, uh, right before I started doing comedy videos, my YouTube subscribers were uh, about 2,000. So over the course of a year and a half, it's like, wow, I have 2,000 YouTube subscribers. That's amazing. And my Facebook followers, fans on Facebook were maybe like 1,400. And I'm like, that's amazing too. Like, that's a lot. <laughs> and so, but now looking back, it's like, that's not a heck of a lot because I wasn't giving much surface area of myself to for the masses to connect to at least the masses who are right to, for connection with me. So, you know, I had 2000 people, 1400 people connecting with the JP being the version of himself that he thinks he was supposed to be in order to build an audience. So once I started doing my comedy videos, the, the audience started to exponentially Build so you know now it, it you mentioned it's millions and I think that's that's because I'm giving people a chance to actually be exposed to me. So the uh, in another dimension of that I had mentioned like I wasn't trying to build my audience. I just like thinking I'm going to start doing a comedy video. So I did one, and then like two weeks later, I had this brainstorm idea like maybe I could do another comedy video maybe I could do like more than another comedy video maybe I could do like handfuls more so I just started doing it because it was 
an offering that felt good to me creatively, but also like, I think this, this gives people good value. Like it's sharing like some comedy, giving people some laughs, but also delivering deeper messages for people to consider. And, and so just focusing on amusing thyself and giving people value is what I set out to do. I, I really had no intention of I'm going to build an audience and I'm going to build like a bigger business because of this bigger audience that I don't know I'm building. So I was coming from a place of let me just essentially be true to myself, true to my message, true to what I'm inspired to share. And honestly, I think that's a fundamental principle that can work for all of us. If we can, it's, it's like this paradoxical strategy. Like if you want to build a bigger audience, I'm like, yeah, who doesn't? But if you can get into the mindset of I'm not trying to build a bigger audience while I'm trying to build a bigger audience, I think that works for us because we'll come from a more true, authentic place. But when we're just in the mindset of what do I need to do to build a bigger audience, it's like we're focusing externally. It's like, what do I need to be for people in order for them to want to pay attention to me? Which means we're in the mindset of not being ourselves, not being authentic, not being unapologetically true to the messages that want to come through us, the offerings, whatever they might be. And, and then I, uh, another dimension of that, and I know I'm like, oh, long-winded rant. No, actually, it's very helpful what you're saying. Symbol is I take this trip. Um, Choppy. Um, but probably, I, I'm sorry, say that again? Yeah, I, I, it, it caught a little bit. You're back. Oh, cool. So I think after I started doing the comedy videos and the audience was... And I was in an exponential growth cycle and a half before I did any kind of monetization. It's a luxury that I had where it's, I'm earning my living doing emotional healing work. Now this newer online world, if you will, online business of making comedy videos, I don't need to use that to make money. It's like I'm making a living doing emotional healing work. So I, I think uh, that was a helpful strategy for me where for the first year and a half of doing comedy videos, I didn't try to monetize anything. I didn't try to sell my audience anything. And, and that, that allowed it to be like a sort of like an incubating audience growth place where I, I think in a way not just your audience anything for a period of time helps it grow uh, uh, and I know not everybody has that luxury but I think when we are in a place for yeah okay I I can just give more to grow and better for its growth and I know to me, I like, I have no limiting beliefs. Like there's nothing wrong with selling people things and, and making money from it. But when we're doing that, it's like, okay, now I want something for my audience. Again, nothing wrong with that. Yet when we're in just the pure place of giving, 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 that seems to be uh, a wonderful way to help the audience grow from my delusional point of view. And I, and I know I am... But, you know, my, my point of view on this is 100% biased because I'm speaking pretty much exclusively from my experience. And I know it's not, there's many ways to grow. But nonetheless, this, this is my experience of, I guess, some beginning ways that have helped me grow my audience. And, and if I boil all that down, yeah, kind of getting back to the, uh, the fun part of your Fernando of how I get started. I had the inspiration to share my voice with people. That that's truly what inspired me to get started with you know, my online presence. And, and and I agree with you in a way, you know, in uh, I'm actually in a way in, in many ways. 
you know, about being, being authentic, right? You, I, I don't know if you know of Liz Benny, uh, but I was with her, you know, in one panel one time. And at the end of the panel, she's like, everybody got to scream kapow, you know? Uh, and I, I want to use everybody screaming kapow at the same time. And I want to put it in a collage in my, in my next video. And I, and, and I told her, I won't. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> and she, she's like, you're, you're kidding, right? Like, no, I won't. <laughs> you know, I feel silly doing that. I'm not going to do it. And so she's like, wait, whatever. She's like, one, two, three. And, you know, we were, we were like 15 people and all of them scream kapow. And I didn't. Uh, and she asked me, oh, you were not joking. I'm like, no, I, I, it made me feel silly. It didn't make me feel myself doing that, you know. And, and it's something that I don't, I don't want, you know, I don't want my audience to think that I can be, you know, fake. You know, everybody who knows me, I'm, I'm, I'm like this. I'm more lineal. Uh, you know, I can joke in a while and I can probably have spontaneous laughter. But it's how I am, and I'm being, I mean, real, you know, being that way. And and I said, I told her, I, I don't, I don't want to portray something I'm not. I don't want to be screaming, you know, uh, out of the lungs yeah. of that. And and that is probably something that people value, you know, like they probably expect from you, you know, that uh, that kind of uh, not political correct uh, message that you have um, that probably sometimes have got you in trouble. I think actually recently got you in trouble, uh, <laughs> you know, but. Uh, but it's important to be yourself, right? And and, and yeah. it, it creates it, it, people connect and respect you for being yourself. Yeah, I absolutely. I think one of the most fundamental human needs is the need for connection. I think there's a reason why there's seven billion, seven and a half billion people on this earth, and I think the reason is because we need each other. It, we need connection with each other. And when we're being real, we're available for connection. When we're not being real, we might be there physically, but we're not available for a connection. And, and I also believe that people are way smarter than a lot of marketers give them credit for. People are so intelligent. They know when someone's being real. They know when someone's doing a facade. And, you know, I, I think long gone are the days where we show up on video or however we show up and we act like a newscaster where we try to speak perfectly in this tone of voice that has nothing to do with being a human, but it, it, like it's so unreal. There's nothing to connect to. But man, I think when we can be ourselves, be, be true to ourselves and let our actual personality come out, that's realness. And, and, and people love real because they want someone, something to connect to. And I love how like, it's like, yeah, I'm not going to jump up and down, scream, kapow or whatever, because that's, that's not me right now. And so like, that's real of you. And, and you didn't want to fake it. You didn't want a facade. And I think that's a, a great lesson. And I, I think the, a question we can all ask ourselves every day and anytime we're beginning a, a, a project that's going to go out into the online space, uh, is a question we can ask ourselves is, how can I be more real? Am I being real? And how can I be more real here? I think realness always wins out. And, uh, you know, I, I think this truly is a present day phenomenon. We've gone, from my point of view, we've gone past the time where you have to be perfect and polished. I think that's expired. There, there was a time like the newscaster mentality where people wanted to watch that. It's like this fantasy of perfection people were infatuated with for a while. But to me, that is now expired. People are very, very drawn and infatuated with realness. And I think that is a fact. You know, like, for example, you right now, you are having an interview with me, you know, in a T-shirt uh, outside of your house. I'm here in my office wearing a polo and, you know, I'm full of toys in my back. So I think those are a lot of Star Wars toys, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, you know, that's how we are, right? And we, we are able to portray ourselves, you know, Five years ago, I would probably be wearing, you know, a, a nice uh, shirt, probably a tie, and I will trying to be a professional here. And, you know, and right now, I hear birds in the background, and that is actually very cool. Actually, a lot about, you, you know, how you like to live your life, right? 
Yeah. Uh, now, I know, and you actually touch it, kind of, kind of not touch it right now. You are about to create uh, a community where people can join. And what is what, what is what you're building right now? Yeah, I appreciate you asking. It's definitely a passion project of mine. So right now, uh, we're in the building phases. I'm not sure when it's going to be launched, probably in the next couple months-ish. Uh, it's going to be a, an online membership community. It's a, you know, essentially a monthly subscription community where uh, I'm giving people exclusive content, mostly through video and some audio, uh, to bring more meaning and purpose and playfulness into people's lives. My, my big thing is we all crave meaning in our life. You know, when we feel our actions are meaningful, when we feel that we have meaning in our life, like, wow, life feels like a, a blessing to be a part of rather than a chore. We feel fulfillment inside when we have a sense of meaning. And my personal angle on creating more meaning in our life is the more playfulness and purposefulness we have, the more meaningfulness we have. So playfulness and purposefulness, those are the primary ingredients that I use in my personal life and my work with clients to create this beautiful uh, phenomenon called meaning. So helping people create more meaningful lives through exclusive content that has the the purposeful sincerity to it but also the playfulness of comedy in it that's what the project's uh, all about and i'm taking the you know the the thousands of hours worth of experience that i have working one-on-one -on -one with clients in the depths of their hearts and their psyches as well as the you know the quarter of a billion um views I have through my comedy videos. So taking that humor and combining it with a, you know, thousands of hours of experience working with people in their hearts. And uh, I'm going to offer that to people. So I'm really excited. I really am. You said a quarter of a, of a billion with a B? Yeah, yeah. It's, so the the online view count for my videos, it's, uh, it's, it's more than that at this point, but 250 million online views is uh, uh, what I've been blessed with. I, I, and, I, and, I, and I threw champagne when I had a thousand views on mine, right? <laughs> it, it's, it's a great accomplishment. And you know, it's all relative. You, the business is of growing our audience. I think we, we need to remember to celebrate at times. You know, when I, when I reached a thousand subscribers on YouTube, it was as big of a celebration as when I reached uh, a million fans on my Facebook page. It's all, all relative. So I think sometimes a trap that I can get in is it's never enough. There's always more. So it's uh, so easy to not focus on what I have and being grateful for what I have, but just like become like, like obsessed with what I don't have yet. And you know, like the part of that is like it's ambition. The bad part is, ah, it's hard to appreciate what I have when I'm just focusing on what I don't have yet. So, man, when we have a, a hundred views on something, like, let's celebrate it. Like, let that be a beautiful milestone. When we reach 500 followers and of our audience, let's let that be a milestone of celebration. When we reach a thousand, it's a new celebration. I think if we don't celebrate with genuine gratitude, then we're just going to be in the energy of resentment while we're trying to build our audience because we're going to resent how big our audience isn't. I, and you're right. You know, when, when I saw my first when I saw my first course, you know, my first, <laughs> I, I made about forty bucks or something like that out of that deal. I invited my family, my my three kids, my wife, my mom, my wife's mom. We went to eat. I spent a lot more money than I actually made in that course. But <laughs> they told me, "Why are you wasting the money you haven't really made yet?" And I'm like because I'm celebrating my first victory. I just yeah. officially became an online mentor. You know, I have officially my first student, you know, for me, that was huge, right? Sure. And, and now I have, I have a lot more than that, right? But, uh, but for me at that point was very important and you have to remember to always celebrate, you know, like you have to always pay yourself as an entrepreneur. You have always have to keep in mind, you gotta pay yourself first. Because, you know, if you are not happy with what your accomplishments, 
who cares if anybody else is? So you got to always feel, you know, that satisfaction on what you're doing. And that will bring more successes in the future life. Yeah. At least that's how I see it. Yeah, I, I agree 100%. And I think, you know, probably everybody listening to this, uh, you know, you know something about mindset. I think there's always more for us to learn about mindset. But when we're in a space, uh, mind space and heart space of being grateful for what we have, we're noticing what's there. So uh, boiling down, we're noticing abundance. Like we're noticing things that's that uh, when we're only focusing on what's not here yet, we're actually focusing on lack because it's not here yet. And I think we're training our minds what direction to point in a direction of lack or a direction of abundance. And honestly, I think we, we need the appreciation for what we have that helps us kind of be in an, an abundance mindset, but we also want the ambition to keep growing. But I think it's empty and uh, empty ambition when we don't have appreciation and gratitude for what we have. And I love that. Like, you know, one client, one student, like that is a milestone. And there's always going to be more milestones. There's the, uh, so it's like celebrating one milestone doesn't mean like, okay, we're, we're folding up shop here. We have one milestone. So I'm done forever. No, it's like the celebration of it creates more momentum to go even further. I agree with that. You know, I mean, a lot of people tend to want to fly before they even learn how to walk. Right. And that's, <laughs> That is, you know, the common, it's the common denominator, you know, in every entrepreneur, right? They say like, well, now in business, now when I, when I see that million dollar check that everybody's talking about, all that dreams that Gary Vaynerchuk talks about, you know, like, hey, hey, hey where's this money coming from? Well, you need to work a hell lot of hours to yeah. get there first and you got to feel first, you know, have accomplishments and, and then it's going to start happening. Now, what advice would you give to these entry level entrepreneurs, you know, about that you know having the right mindset you know staying focused you know what what would you tell them you know that when is success going to come is a good question so part of the mindset i think is you you need to be centered within yourself you need to be focused uh, you know have congruence and inspired action that is driven from your thoughts so I think it's so easy to lose our center watching other people. What are they doing? And then we start comparing ourselves to them. And when we're doing that, we are losing our center. It's like we become the surfer who's trying to stand on his or her surfboard and our center of gravity is completely lost. You know, we're in the water before we even have a chance to stand up. And it, it, we, to me, we just completely lose our balance when we're way focused on other people. But when we can let our actions be inspired and congruent with thoughts that come uh, centered inside of us, man, I think that's the first mindset. And I think there's nothing wrong with seeing what other people are doing and ourselves be inspired by that. But when we start to compare ourselves to that, to me, that's actually uninspiring. It can be a, a defeating place because it's so easy to – look at people who have been at the game longer. It's like, oh, they're making tens of millions of dollars and I'm working on cracking a thousand dollars or cracking $10,000. So it can be easy to defeat ourselves uh, through the game of comparisons. So I think we've got to routinely find ways to be centered within ourselves. And then I think we also have to have a mindset and a heart set where we embrace discomfort. I think when we look at successful people who inspire us the most, one of the things that they all have in common is they have a willingness to be uncomfortable. And when I mean uncomfortable, it's, uh, it can mean many things, but one of them is there's a willingness to feel fear. The fear of the unknown, like, when will I really make it? Well, you know, it's unknown. And probably nobody can tell you for sure. So the fear of the unknown, the fear of failure, in order to actually try, we have to be willing to feel those emotions 
and still take action anyway. Uh, if we're not willing to feel those emotions, then it's like we're in a place where we're afraid to feel afraid. So we avoid doing the things that we fear are going to trigger those emotions. So in other words, we don't take real inspired action. We don't really take risks because we're not willing to feel the discomfort. So we avoid really jumping off the cliffs of action that we know have the potential to provoke the discomfort. So I think a huge ingredient for success is a willingness to be uncomfortable. Like it, it, it won't kill you. Like feeling your own emotions, like being afraid, like that actually adds to life. It, 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 it definitely won't kill you. So yeah, I think that's a, a huge piece of advice. I look at anything big that I've done that's helped me create success. There was a huge barrier of fear that like I couldn't bypass, I couldn't outsmart it. I had to go through the fires of fear and feel the discomfort. And uh, uh, in some of those instances, great things came from it. Great success came from it that absolutely wouldn't have come if I had a willingness to go into that discomfort. You know, so, you know, especially entrepreneurship, it is such a uh, unstable uh, experience. <laughs> Getting a job for the the fairy tale corporation where here's my pension, here's like all these predictable things like that. That's a, that is stability. It's not necessarily excitement, not, not necessarily inner fulfillment, but that's stability. So in the realm of entrepreneurship, it's a very unstable place. So we, we have to let our uh, emotions and our feelings be, be our friend because there's so much unknown instability uh, sort of the proverbial dark forest uh, that we go into i think we we need a mindset of curiosity not a mindset of certainty i think a mi need for a mindset of certainty means we'll just drive ourselves crazy because we're playing a, in a landscape that is very uncertain so man you know letting letting ourselves be a curious cat uh, I think is incredibly helpful for us as well. And you're right. Uh, I mean, uh, I don't think if you speak to any one successful entrepreneur, I don't think nobody will have ever tell you that they were they were not afraid of something. I mean, just me creating this course, I didn't sleep a couple of nights thinking, what if I don't sell one? Yeah. Now, I had two choices. You know, I spent months creating this course, you know, and I could be like, uh, I'm not going to keep on spending time and money on this, you know, what if I don't sell one? Uh, you cannot go with that mentality in life. You know, you have to take risk and you have to go on, you know, and just like when people are doing shirts, right? They're like, I already have 20, 20 designs in my story and I'm not selling absolutely none. Uh, maybe it's time to stop. No, maybe the 21st one you load is the one that is going to sell, you know, so keep going, you know, keep going. I mean, it's, you're already invested. You're already here. Keep, keep trying, you know, yeah. it, it's learning failure and, 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 and overcoming fear that it's going to get you to the next step. And the problem is not a lot of people are willing to take that step. You know, it's fear kills people. I mean, uh, I think it's probably the number one reason people don't succeed is fear, yeah, you know, in an opinion I have on that, I love what you're saying. I, my spin on that is I don't think fear has ever hurt anybody. I think trying to avoid fear is what hurts people. You know, when, when we're in the space of I'm afraid to be afraid, therefore I'm avoiding the fear. But man, to me, the true warrior of life and in business is the one who's willing to be afraid and take action anyway, willing to be afraid and walk forward anyway. So yeah, welcome to the human condition. Like you're gonna be afraid. You can either avoid it and live in the, essentially the coffin of your comfort zone where you're just avoiding your fear. Good luck having an enjoyable life doing that, by the way. <laughs> or you can realize like, yeah, uh, fear is part of what it is to be a human. And if we embrace it, then we're not limited by our fear. We 
avoid it, then I think we impose a lot of self limitations, maybe without even knowing it. Now, I know we, 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 we're running out of time, but uh, could you, when you are uh, coming with ideas for what you're going to talk about next, how do you find those ideas? What makes you decide what is your next topic? I mean, you are all over the place sometimes. You can go from, uh, you know, talking about entrepreneurs, then go talk about millennials, then you go talk about yoga, then gyms, yeah. and then you go back to meat, and then you go to coconut oil. <laughs> I mean, uh, how do you decide what is next? What, 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 I mean, what drives you to talk about something? And I, and, and I talk about that yeah. because when we're in this industry, we have to find ideas. And we have to be unique sure. to find those ideas. So that could be a good advice to my, you know, to, to the people listening to you today. Yeah. So, you know, my ideas don't come from what I would call a thinking process. I don't sit down and think about what would be a good idea. You know, Einstein has talked about the uh, the intuitive mind is a sacred gift. The rational mind is a faithful servant. So I think a lot of us forget we have the sacred gift of our intuitive mind. I don't think they make human beings without an intuitive, creative mind. So when we forget the gift and just live in the mindset of the servant, the thinking, rational mind, we become severely limited. So it, when we can get into a creative space, when I get into a creative space, I just notice ideas float in. And it's in a way where it's not me thinking about it. It's me more like receiving like, oh, that's a good idea. I didn't even think about it. But like my mind was a net that it landed in. So, you know, it, I'm always making notes on my phone. Like I might be taking a walk. It's like, oh, here's an idea. I just want to like, let me note this idea before it slips away from me. So that's where my ideas come from, uh, ju uh, not by what I think, but just a creative space that I, cre uh, that I allow myself to be in. And I think we all have that. The question is, do you realize it or not? And then there certainly is a thinking process where I'll you know, have a, an idea for a video. And then it's like, okay, now it's time to think about what am I going to say in the video after I have the idea and and I would say there's also a couple other criteria in order for me to do a video. It has to be something that interests me. It has to be something that I feel a degree of passion about. And therefore, you know, with the interest and passion, I have to feel amused by it as well. So th those are my criteria like receiving ideas creative creatively and then feeling a degree of connection passion interest and amusement by it and then then i've got the recipe for a worthwhile video idea all your videos look you know research they look like you actually went and you know and found positive angles and negative angles to combine them and co come up with you know with some flow or, you know, in your comedy. Uh, mm. I mean, they're, they're, in a way, they're educational videos. Is that your intention? I mean. Yeah, the, uh, I appreciate you saying that and seeing it that, uh, that way. Yeah, my, my underlying intention with any of the work I do, including the comedy videos, is to help people to help improve their lives in what, some form or another. So, to me, there there are always messages of education, consideration, and self awareness. And I look at comedy as a language. Comedy is a language that people listen to. Yeah, pe people love to laugh. So I like to embed deeper messages for consideration within the language of comedy. And to me, you know, just making people laugh for the sake of them laughing, like that's a great service to give to the world. But that's not my motivation. I think it's a beautiful thing that people can laugh at my videos. But to me, the more beautiful thing is the fact that the comedy gets them to pay attention to what's hopefully a more meaningful message that goes in consciously, maybe unconsciously, and maybe it doesn't go in at all for some people. But my intention is for all, there always to be a deeper message in there. Yeah, and, 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 I, and, I, and I, well, at least I, I can see that. I mean, I'm pretty sure everybody else does. I mean, your, your video on entrepreneurship was being shared, you know, in, in, a, in all the Amazon uh, 
communities, you know, uh, because mm-hmm. even at home, right? We, 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 we connected with that, you know, <laughs> definitely connected with that video. Uh, and of course, you know, other views that we connect in, in, different, in different areas of our, our lives. Now, you have now a line of products and that's, you know, that, that you, you, you decided to launch a store and, and they are like, they're like phrases that you actually say, you know, in a daily. How do you decide or, or do you have a team that may help you decide what goes in that store? I mean, now you sell curtains for shower curtains and, <laughs> and, and pillows. Uh, I mean, uh, funny, actually, if I, if I needed a curtain shower for, you know, I have glass on my, on my I would probably think about buying one of those. They're actually really neat. What, what drove you to, you know, to pass your message into printable products? Yeah. Yeah, it's a great question. Um, you know, a line of t-shirts was my motivation. Yeah, I just thought like one, that's, that's a fun idea. You, you can have you know, funny t-shirts. And I thought also like, it, that's a, it's a logical, easy way to uh, have a, a stream of monetization. And, and like it's, it would be easy for me to promote my t-shirt without really promoting them in my videos. Like I'll just wear a, vid- uh, you know, a t-shirt in a given video. So it just seemed like a great idea to do the t-shirts. And, and it took me a long time to find the right fit of a, a t-shirt company to partner with who receives the orders, takes it, prints them, ships them out. Like I, I don't do anything other than come up with the ideas and then promote them online. And the, uh, the, the company I work with, Cotton Zoom, their, their modus operandi is they have, t- you know, any, any concept for a T-shirt, we've got that available for a phone case, uh, pillows, shower curtains. So when they built the online store, I was surprised. Like, okay, there, there's sh- ultra-spiritual shower curtains available. <laughs> okay. I don't know if any of those have sold. I, I don't really care. But the, the t-shirts are the main intention. The other items just happen to be uh, items that they're, they've got in their warehouse and they can print the concepts on. <laughs> okay, that's fair. <laughs> uh, one more uh, question before I let you go. Uh, what is the last advice you will give uh, people who are starting, you know, a business, uh, you know, I mean, we, we talk about being original, being yourself, you know, having not no, no losing fear. Uh, what is the last advice you would give them? Yeah. Know your why. Know why you're doing what you're doing, why you take the effort to run your business and maybe sometimes, maybe all the time, work long hours, why you're in this challenge. I think we need to have a why. A why, in my opinion, is the same thing as our purpose. And our purpose means, okay, whatever your purpose is, it means we have essentially something bigger than ourselves. So like this business, it's, it's bigger than just me because I've got my why, which connects me to my purpose. And when we're, when we've got a purpose, it, it makes suffering matter. And, and uh, use the word suffering lightly. I mean, like working long hours, sometimes missing out on things, uh, the grind. So if we don't have a good enough why in purpose, then it's like our, our suffering doesn't matter. And if it doesn't matter, then we're just not willing to suffer we're not willing to do what it takes we're not willing to have a pain threshold but if we're doing it for a good enough reason then it's very worthwhile so i think we need to understand what is my why today like we might have had a why a year ago when we started our business it might be the same why and it might be different but we need to have a renewed relationship with our why I think that that connects us not only to our purpose, but also our passion. And I think passion is a very, very sustainable, high vibe life energy that can fuel us in ways that uh, we can't make up for. 
Definitely. I mean, not knowing your why, it's you're not the first person who tells me, you know, that knowing your why is the first thing you should know. I mean, you don't have a reason to succeed. I mean, it's just it's just unnecessary. Yeah. Uh, I want to thank you, JP. Uh, of course, you know where where do people can reach out to you? Uh, you know, of course, I have here your Facebook uh, Facebook page. Um, you can follow you what on YouTube, and where else can they find you? Yeah, all the usual places, but I think Facebook and YouTube are the best places. That's where I'm posting videos on regularly, and all my social media handles are Awaken with JP. Yes, sir, and. Uh, also down is going to be a link for you to get uh, the first, I think it's the first couple of chapters of your book. If they want to, or, you know, or uh, if they want access, I think it's free access for the first couple of chapters for free. And I will give a link to that as well. Uh, any, 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 any closing thoughts before we go? Yeah. Thank you, Fernando, for having me on uh, your uh, a wonderful offering. I appreciate you inviting me to be a small part of this. And I really thank you for your time, JP. Absolutely. I'll talk to you soon.